Now, this is something special. I'm going to start this off by showing this to him. <laughs> Leander Pays. <laughs> How are you? Hi, my Richie. Brother? How are you, Martin? Oh, I'm very good. <laughs> <laughs> you remember this trophy? Does it ring a bell? Is it, does it remind you of sweat, blood, and tears, and toil? Or does it also remind you of, uh, of childhood friends, bud? That Thanks. reminds me of my brother who <laughs> helped me start tennis. I wouldn't have been a tennis player without you. You not only helped me bunk school, you not only taught me all my gundagiri, but you actually are the reason I play tennis today. For all you guys out there who don't know, but Rishikesh Kanan, otherwise known as Rishike, was the reason that I played tennis. Because this southpaw, lefty, was a phenomenal tennis player. He uh, was much better than I was. He had all the skills and the talent. He had a fantastic slice, lefty serve. And uh, I got to thank you for these 30 years of magic that you've introduced me to. Uh, you know, I love you like crazy, but uh, you showed me the tennis court. So thank you. I've always, you know, I said this about you saying that you exemplify not just good behavior on the court, but off it and the kind of respect that you give, not just to friends, but even lay people. But yeah, the story of that trophy, come on, let's talk about it. You give yourself, <laughs> you know, in a way you give a part of yourself away. Uh, and I, I want people to know that. <laughs> the uh, reverence that I have for people is, uh, is the most important thing in my life. That is uh, what my parents have taught me. Um, I think that is a uh, dying commodity today in this modern day and age where uh, commercial gain and uh, and branding and 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 uh, sports business uh, is the call of the day. I think that reverence for people and giving gratitude to people and showing uh, compassion to people are, are really the call of the day. But I forget the year that that trophy was uh, was won. It could have been two thousand and six or seven. I'm not sure. No, much um, earlier. It says July fifth to July thirteenth. The Swiss Open Gustad doubles champion Leander Pace, 2003. David Riekel. <laughs> Jesus, do you remember you actually met Federer for the first time there in the locker room? Huh? And yeah. you, you've always been a huge Federer guy and we were in the locker room and we were chit-chatting before one of my matches and, and Roger walks in with Stan Wawrinka and both of us just went silent. <laughs> <laughs> Me more than you. Ram Kumar Ramanathan... Uh, uh, you know, th this man inspires uh, you as much as he does me. So I'm glad you're on. Vaibhav, Sham, thank you Hi, all the wonderful people for joining in. Uh, uh, dad's join in. Uh, v. Kannan, good morning. I hope Uncle Ves also joins. I've sent him a, a WhatsApp on juice. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when your dad and uh, yourself used to beat up on my dad and me in the parent and child uh, matches? Uh, <laughs> in, in Saturday club, we used to play parent and child. How old were we dad? then? About like, what, seven, eight years old? Huh? Seven or eight years Your old. Your dad and you were always uh, winning that uh, parent and child trophy. There are occasions when you have really given us the hiding of our life. But the interesting thing in that was the gentleman, which is Dr. West Space and V. Kannan, were at the baseline and doing all the hard work. And these two little fellows <laughs> would be at the net. Don't tell them that, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> and knowing that, you know, how competitive little seven-year-olds are, Saying that if a ball comes to me, it's going to be a body shot on Kannan. If a ball comes to me, it's going to be a body shot on Pace. <laughs> That's the only way we could win points then, because I certainly didn't know how to hit a back end. I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> Varun Mehta has joined in. There are going to be some Varun Mehta stories. Varun coming Mehta? <laughs> Good God. Coimbatore. 1984? Yeah, we are really revealing our age. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Varun Mehta, dude, that was a hell of a story. But coming back to Shtad, that uh, yeah. that tournament was really special. Huh? We went there in 2003. I couldn't, I didn't remember it was that far back. But with my trophies, what I do this is that uh, I've been very blessed to have a few. So the Shtad trophy, because you were there with me that week, because you are the reason that I got introduced to tennis, that Shtad trophy will always remain in your cupboard, in your house, because that is my reverence for you. Uh, for you, not only as a brother, not only as a rock star who has achieved so much greatness in your field. When we were little boys at La Martinia in Calcutta, we always had this dream. You always wanted to own the, 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 the radio waves around, around the world. You always wanted to be the best RJ and, and presenter. And, and look where you are. I mean, I have tremendous respect for, for the amazing stuff that you've done, not just on your radio, 
but you are the voice of Sean Connery in dubbing. You're the voice of Amitabh Bachchan in in stuff. The things that you have done in your field um, is drives me to keep reinventing myself. Uh, likewise, as you had the Star Trophy, um, four of my Miami trophies. I won Miami, uh, the Miami Open, four years in a row with four different partners, and all four of them are with my manager in New York. Um, it's in uh, in, Jim, in Jimbo's house uh, because that's my reverence for him uh, because of what he does uh, day in and day out to look after me and, and take care of my career. I wouldn't be who I am without his help or my whole team. Um, 2015 Wimbledon Mixed Doubles Trophy. is at one of our uh, dear friends raj nayak and sagri nayak's house uh, raj and sagri are um, are like guiding lights to me their their bond as as a couple their the way they conduct themselves as, as citizens of our country as parents as friends um, they are just really really wonderful and sagri is like an elder sister to me she goes back to calcutta and they were at wimbledon in 2015 uh, when i won so as i finished winning um, i got another great story about raj as i finished winning the match I dropped the match-winning ball and I hit it from the opposite end of the court, on the other side of the umpire's chair, all the way across center court at Wimbledon, into the family box, right next to the royal box, into Raj's hands, and he just leant back and caught it. But the funny <laughs> thing was, the next day, when Raj and me went shopping down uh, Leicester Square, um, we were sitting at a cafe, uh, having a coffee, and uh, Raj. was having a coffee facing the the crowd walking on the street and I was facing inwards and a bunch of people walked by and said how cute there's the wimbledon champion and his father i still <laughs> rag rag raj about it today he's like what do you mean father i look as young as you <laughs> which he really does he looks fantastic <laughs> so i keep ragging raj my wimbledon trophy of 2015 is in their cupboard <laughs> sunny or top has joined that the great sunny wow the big gangster <laughs> Dude, we got to we got to share some Eddie Eccleston and Sunny <laughs> stories. So Sunny is joined. Another interesting uh, fact about Stard and meeting Roger Federer for the first time is Leander doesn't ask for favors at all. Um, he's a little cagey about asking even dear friends. But I remember uh, Sanjay Singh, Leander's trainer, going up to Roger and getting a note written to the Swiss consulate in Delhi. Hi, this is Roger. Big love to all the Swiss consul members there. I think I don't think Sanjay had a visa problem for Switzerland, and then later the uh, Schengen ever in his life because he saw the, that paper. Uh, the Swiss embassy was really sweet at that time. You know, I mean, to conduct a career of thirty years, there are so many people who have played a part in it, and uh, I never forget them. And even if it's just getting me one visa for my coach to go there and play, or if it is organizing one flight uh, with excess baggage, or if it is. Getting equipment done, or or helping me learn a stroke. Um, the Swiss embassy had helped Sanjay get a visa to go to that tournament in Stad. So just as a little thank you to them, I got Roger to sign a little note, and he was so sweet. Uh, he's one of the thorough gentlemen uh, in the world, and we're so lucky with sport today. You know, I mean, you have such amazing ambassadors. So when Roger signed that note, I came back to Delhi and gave to the Swiss embassy just to say thanks for getting uh, Sanjay's visa. Also, lesser known fact, you know, there's a video of Grigor Dimitrov. And Roger Federer singing "Glory of Love," a Peter Cetera song with David Foster, the music producer at the piano, and that was recorded in the, the Palace Hotel in Stad. And uh, you and me, we used to go there for dinner. That's where you met them remember, first. <laughs> yeah, and Mirka, I remember saying Roger likes to spend time here with his friends. <laughs> so, That's right. Like very yeah. sparse. That's lovely. There are not many places that uh, you know legends like him can really hang out and. Uh, You know, there are a few little spots that they get their privacy that uh, that you get to go and kind of let your hair down. And uh, and Stad Montreux is a great place for for music. Um, I remember the jazz music festival that we went to. Um, God, that was a lot of fun, right? We it was just fabulous because uh, we drove from Stad to Montreux. There's a Deep Purple song that goes, "We all came down from Montreux, <laughs> smoke on the water," and we actually did that. <laughs> And at the time, there was Sting playing, there was Dido playing, but you picked one particular star, almost as though you're not a you're not that much a tennis legend, but you could have been in the record label business because <laughs> nobody knew this singer at that time. But we loved our hip hop, so talk about that. Who we went and saw, man. <laughs> you know, uh, your knowledge of music has been amazing, and uh, ever since I've stayed in your house, and we'll get to how you used to order vegetables and make me pay for it, but uh, a little later. But uh, quite a rogue this guy is. But 
when the jazz festival was going on in Montreux, the tennis tournament was the same week. And uh, one of the reasons we went to start at the same time at that time was to make sure we get to the jazz festival in Montreux. So when we drove there, I knew that Sting was playing. We knew that Dido was playing. But no one had heard of Sean Paul. And when we got there and we heard Sting and we were singing out at the, you know, the top of our lungs, thank God there was not much glass around. But Dido was phenomenal. I mean, I just, she's one of my all-time favorites. But this young Rastafarian Sean Paul came in with, with uh, dreads in his hair and he had a bandana. He had a, uh, a um, uh, 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 Bob Marley bandana wrapped around his, his dreads and keeping that in place. And dude, he kept us going for 45 minutes. This guy just belted out song after song, note after note. I mean, I became a big Sean Paul fan after that. I, I just said, this kid's got some talent, right? So Sunny Utub is here. And let's talk about early childhood memories in Queen's Mansions, which is in the, in the heart of Park Street in Calcutta. And we used to, you know, uh, have sleepovers like little kids do in Sunny Utub's house. We used to watch VHS cassettes of Mithunda's films, Mithun Chakravarti's films. <laughs> and the special thing about Sunny's house was also Uncle Johnny, Sunny's dad's bar. I want you to talk about that bar, which and we used to spend so much time looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little emotional about this guy. He's, uh, he's uh, pretty special. Um, yes. This guy, is Sunny Otup, is uh, one of my uh, heroes uh, because... Yes. Not just he was he, uh, our benchmate in school, not just because he was our uh, partner in crime, uh, not just he was uh, the guy who taught me how to hold a cricket bat and, and play cricket together in school and play football and hockey. Um, but this guy's a champion for life. Um, mm -hmm. Sonny, I just uh, don't get much chance to um, see you. I don't get much chance to spend with you, but uh, I love you like crazy. You are uh, you're quite a special guy. You uh, motivate us. You... Uh, you uh, teach us how to reinvent ourselves. You um, are that confidant late at night when I'm a little confused about what I need to do with life or tennis or whether I should retire now or not or whether I should continue in the 2021 season or not. Uh, but just uh, from both Rishi and myself, uh, just uh, love you like crazy, man. You are, he loves uh, you too. He's just he's saying that. He's saying love <laughs> you guys. It's wonderful. So uh, Uncle Johnny's bar. And then we'll go to a fire that happened in Queen's Mansions and three little boys and what we did. Let's talk about those so two things. We were like seven, eight, nine year olds and Uncle Johnny and Auntie Usha used to have Sunny Gavaskar, Vivian Richards, who's, whose daughter now Masaba is a good friend of ours or, or Kapil Dev. Remember Kapil Dev carving into the bar? Um, how they had got, you know, Kapil was here and then they had, uh, you know, Bishan Singh Bedi's uh, stories he used to listen to. That whole 83 team that had come, you know, and they would hang out at Uncle uh, Jani and Auntie Usha's uh, house. We were little kids there. I was what, 10, 9, 10 years old at the time. And we used to look up at them and listen to them stories, think, man, these guys are really cool. And, you know, they used to come straight from the Eden Gardens where they'd finish their matches and come and have dinner and, and hang at the bar. Um, Sunny's house was always, Auntie Usha was always that, she was the first rock star that I ever knew. She was the first woman that epitomized what a woman should be. She ran an impeccable house. Uh, she made sure the tiffin to school was phenomenal. Most of the time I would steal Sunny's tiffin and your tiffin more than my own. <laughs> and uh, the kids were always well turned out and looked after Anjali and Sunny. Um, they look, Auntie Usha and Uncle Jani looked after us growing up. But their house was where we played cricket. Their house was where we learned about what... Uh, being an achiever was about and at Queen's Mansion they lived on the second floor my parents and I lived on and my sisters lived on the third floor and you and I would always take turns spending the night either at the Kanan household or at the Pays household or at the Utop household and that's how we grew up I think that you know to me these friendships are are the most important thing in the world for me and the fire you became a firefighter very early on. The other story we'll come to, Varun Mehta is still there. Madan, I fought a few fires in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Queen's Mansions, I need a God. perpetual fire extinguisher in my back. <laughs> Talk you about become that. become a soft that. target. <laughs> People think that being a gentleman nowadays, you're weak. 
you're going to find uh, out soon <laughs> this, this wit is is west space's wit this is the good doctor's wit <laughs> what are you without our parents <laughs> so that fire and, and you were the first to catch it much <laughs> in queen's mansions so we Whoa. were playing pick up sticks right on yeah. anjali and sunny's uh, uh, bedroom floor and playing pick up sticks their uh, their their floor was getting really hot and i kept on saying you know guys this floor is getting hot there's something going on and i thought you know maybe they left the geese around or maybe you know there was water somewhere or there's a candle somewhere couldn't figure it out i mean it was too young right we were like what 7 8 9 years old yeah. and then all of a sudden we we decided to go and tell auntie usha that this whole floor is like burning up i remember you guys were all in your pjs because we were spending the night at sunny and anjali's <laughs> i was in shorts because i used to feel so hot in kolkata in the summer i used to sleep in shorts right and uh, and and we felt the floor going hot so i went and told auntie usha i said auntie you know this floor is getting really hot so she came over and she looked out of the window and there were these huge flames coming up to the second floor from the first floor these huge flames were coming out of the window and uh, suzy and nikki's house down below uh, jamshed who was a who was a great uh, footballer back in the, uh, the in, in the calcutta mm-hmm. league um, suzy and nikki's house uh, had caught fire I'm not quite sure why the the house had caught fire, but uh, short reason, circuit in the electricity, electric short circuit. Yeah. But I remember we called the fire brigade, and we kids were like, "Wow, big eyes!" And we 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 ran down the spiral staircase down the back, watching this whole thing, right, just to evacuate from there. And uh, yeah, that was the one of the first times that uh, that at Queen's Mansion there there had been a fire, so we kind of helped out. <laughs> Gajraj Rao has joined us. The actor, director, a resource, uh-huh. Shubh Mangal, Zyada <laughs> Savdan. What an actor! Sunny says it was a short circuit. It was either New Year's Eve or Christmas Eve. Uh, then we move to to Sunny the outside. Sunny has been the cause of a lot of short circuits of Eddie Eccleston. <laughs> That's another childhood. <laughs> my my choir buddy at church. <laughs> So we all knew that mm-hmm. Akhtar Ali sir was, you know, cap, uh, the uh, coach and captain of the Indian Davis Cup team. But his younger brother, somebody that you and me forged a bond with. Everybody was going to the mecca of tennis, which is South Club and you know Saturday Club and Cricket and Football Club. But we went to Outram Club because we wanted to train. We wanted to train with Anwar sir, and you were brought on a, a cycle with Liaquat. Talk about those days. um my father uh, always believed that i needed uh, a man friday a confidant someone who would look after me because i was just a bundle of energy and as much as dad tried to put me into boxing into swimming into cricket into hockey and football to ex- you know kind of expand this energy and and then get rid of this energy um liaquat used to take me everywhere on a cycle when i used to come to school i would have my school bag packed with all my books from the whole week because i could never do my time table monday to friday uh, monday to friday classes i just had all my books in one bag when i went to football practice i had my football boots on liaquat would take me on his bike there so i remember once uh, we were driving down uh, theater road and uh, i was going from school to uh, south club for practice and we would weave through traffic at lightning speed as fast as a as a, a cycle could take you and all of a sudden there was this black ambassador that came right in front of us and we hit the ambassador i went flying over the handlebars onto the ambassador and being the cheeky little bugger that i am i banged on the the windscreen and i said kaise chala rahe ho gaadi and it was my dad <laughs> my dad <laughs> my dad who had seen us flying coming in the opposite direction <laughs> wanted to slow us down so he came <laughs> 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 kaise chala rahe ho gaadi right this is still today <laughs> <laughs> but Liaquat used to take me everywhere, and uh, I remember coming to Outram Club with Anwar Ali. Uh, the Ali family has been uh, very instrumental in my life. Um, not only has uh, Akhtar Ali been my coach and taught me the nuances of uh, of uh, volleying, uh, he also gave me a nickname Chalaki because he felt I hit too many drop shots all the time. I couldn't play normal tennis, and I kept on trying to explain to Anwar uh, Akhtar sir that. I don't have good tennis technique. I started tennis late, so obviously I have to do chalaki to win points. Otherwise, it gets too boring to play twenty shot rallies. I don't like that. We <laughs> drop shots. Let them come forward. They come forward. Hit the lob. <laughs> so, <laughs> if they get that drop shot again, <laughs> so, I got the nickname chalaki from Akhtar sir. My first Davis Cup uh, partner was uh, Zisha Ali. Nineteen ninety second of February, Chandigarh. We beat the Japanese uh, in five hours and twenty eight minutes. 1860 in the fifth, and now Zishan is my coach in Davis Cup. 
and one of my close confidants but anwar ali is the one that taught us how to play uh, tennis at outram club and the only reason that you me and the whole <laughs> gang of gundas went to play tennis was we would raid the fridge <laughs> somehow we learned how to pick that lock at the fridge <laughs> There was that uh, ice cream soda, no? That we yeah. used to have. Yeah. Huh? Man, it was the most divine thing in the world. We used to call it cotton candy, right? Cotton ice cream candy, soda. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that was divine. <laughs> Till today, I'm hooked on uh, hooked on uh, like colas because of that. Just love that cotton candy. We would not go to learn strokes or how to serve or return. We went for the ice cream soda that Anwar sir would buy for us. <laughs> A lot of people joining in. Uh, Lian, your friend from Goa. Ramon Fernandez, the singer, Leanne. What what wonderful Good. memories! Hi, Leanne. Good to see you. Hi, Leanne. How are you, Baba? Sanjeev Mantri, executive director of ICSA Lombard, has joined us. Wonderful to see you. Uh, Gaurav Sharma is there. G, thank you for joining in. Uh, let's move now to the sub junior nationals in Coimbatore. Anwar Ali takes the West Bengal state team, Leanne De Pez and Rishikesh Kannan, and Varun Mehta. the photographer the fashion photographer is also on this particular one <laughs> and varun's not going to like this story bro yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing is we see our first ever 3d film tell us about uh, you know recount that <laughs> anwar sir takes us it was chota kutti chetan my dear kutti chetan in hindi it became chota chetan <laughs> which year was that that was 80s Some, Jesus, I can't even remember. Bad. My God, in the mid '80s. But I remember we went for this movie, My Dear Kuti Chetan, and uh, it was the first 3D movie. I can never forget. I was going for the popcorn and the cola, but when we got there, they gave us these fancy glasses, and we kids, we got these glasses, and they were made out of paper, and they had this plastic stuff in the middle, and you put them on, and every time you'd watch the the scene. it would like to be the hand coming out at you like that or it would be the ice cream coming out at you like that it was like you know i mean the first time it happened i remember the ice cream coming on and i kind of reached for it you know as in reflex action you know and uh, it was such a, a fun experience but remember after the movie i don't remember much of the movie i just remember this 3d effect but after the movie when we came back to the hotel for some reason varun didn't want to go for the movie he i, I i'm not sure whether his stomach was aching or or something happened or he had, you know maybe played a tough match that day but when we came back i remember that the geezer had blown in the bathroom and varun was in the bedroom sleeping and the front door was locked and the room key was on the inside with varun so none of us could get in long story short none of us could get into the room and we kept on banging for about 15 20 minutes literally almost breaking like breaking the door down and in the hotel they were like you know we're going to break the door down and you guys are going to have to pay Fifty thousand rupees for the door, and fifty thousand rupees, and at that time in the eighties was, you know, way more money than any of us had. You know, so I was like, no, no, don't break the door down. And then somehow we managed to get in, right, and open that door. So Varun, uh, he is being very modest, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> a tale of dare devilry, which even Bear Gills, with all his National Geographic experience, will not be able to do. So everybody is trying to. get varun to open that door the smoke is coming out of that hotel room and we were afraid that there was a fire inside leander pays gets out of the window this is really like out of any uh, avengers film from the ledge of one window he goes to another window he climbs in through the window wakes varun up and opens the door from inside man if you had slipped even that much India would have lost 18 Grand Slam titles, would have lost a world record holder in the Davis Cup, and lost a bronze medal in the Olympics. I would never have forgiven you, <laughs> Varun. I'm sorry, bro. I was trying not to tell this story, but Rishi, if we didn't believe in ourselves, we wouldn't be who we are today. We would have been back in Calcutta at Baligan's Fari, eating, uh, uh, you know, uh, puris and alu. <laughs> uh, but i i i just uh, i just think this we've been so blessed with the memories we've had you know the friendships we have the memories we've created over the years and that's what life's about i mean look at us today covid-19 virus we're all in lockdown we're having to reinvent ourselves innovate and do uh, new things uh, you know use digital space to reach out and entertain our fans and and our followers uh, this sort of stuff is uh, is such a call today for the human race to come together as one and to really show compassion to really show an empathy uh, to to the human race to really 
uh, feel for each other and support each other as one, regardless of color or caste or creed or religion or which geographical part of the world we we are from. I mean, this uh, COVID nineteen, this virus is quite a brute. You know, it's uh, gotten every part of the world uh, in, uh, infected, or every part of the world it hasn't spared. And we all got to come together to fight as one to make sure that our world is a better place to live in. Beautiful words. Always respect when you watch a Grand Slam tennis tournament or any other kind of tournament, the ball boys who pick up the balls and give it to the players before they serve, and you know before a point begins. Leander Pace earned that learned that lesson very early in life because him and me and a bunch of us who were ball boys for the Indian Davis Cup team, and it was a little difficult to get. Uh, to get permission, you know, but we managed. <laughs> Talk about those so things. B. G. Mustafi, Rishi... the great wow. B. G. Mustafi, was, <laughs> the great memory. Who was actually God a tournament director soul. for many tournaments in Calcutta uh, for the West Bengal Tennis Association. But he was in charge of training and handling the ball boys. So, guys, for the record, this is how Rishikesh Kanan, Rishi K, as we lovingly know him, got me into tennis. La Martinia School, early eighties, somewhere in the early to mid 80s um we had already played tennis uh, i was more playing uh, god knows what sport on a tennis court i would more drag my racket around and there the, <laughs> there was one reason i went uh, to the tennis courts uh, you know and to meet with my friends and stuff but davis cup was coming into town and vijay amitraj anand amitraj shashi menon vasudevan zisha nali local boy were all playing and we were since we were like 10 11 years old and uh, rishi k told me in class one day machi we can bunk class because <laughs> we can go become ball boy now he had me on hello all he had to say we could bunk class and i was in it didn't matter what you do so i said how he said tomorrow morning when you go home you get your mother and father to sign in your black diary that you are signing up To join ball boying for Davis Cup, <laughs> and then we can bunk class. He goes, yeah. I said, this is fantastic news. I went home that same day and I got my dad to sign. Dad signed my diary. I filled in why I was bunking. I was going to be ball boys for Davis Cup. So the next day, Rishikesh Kanan and Leander Pace goes out and outside Mr. Donald Olney, who was our principal at La Martinia's office, and we presented him our diary to say that, sir, our parents have uh, requested leave. We didn't say bunk class, but respect uh, requested leave from class. So for three days we could go and be ball boys on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Davis Cup. So Mr. Olney signed our diary to give us permission. We went dancing out of the office all the way back to class, <laughs> and for the next three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, off that February of twelfth of May, nineteen eighty six. So it must have been February of nineteen eighty six, if my memory is right. um we went to davis cup at south club and mr bj mustafi tried all of us out and mr bj mustafi the trick to him was not to be the best ball boy the trick to him was to get him one of robidas wajivdas and so all of you that don't know what a wajivda is it is a nimbu pani with masala yeah. black salt and lard mirch so we got mr bj mustafi a wajivda nimbu pani with black salt and lard mirch and we became ball boys <laughs> life has never looked back since <laughs> <laughs> why it never looked back also ladies and gentlemen and all of you are watching is because akhtar ali told a little leander pace bring your rackets and you will hit a little with anand amrit raj and vijay amrit raj and all of us remaining ball boys are like what is pace up to man pace himself had no clue what he was up to he was more interested in just getting mangoes and he got he got some serious Dude, injuries in the process it, bro <laughs> <laughs> there was one crazy lady who uh, lived in this bungalow behind south club you know and uh, we were all ball boys so we got permission to go so we were there friday we were there saturday and on saturday evening after the doubles which was short all of us were picking mangoes behind uh, south club at this huge mango tree and i remember we had our lacoste shirts you know it used to be a navy blue shirt with white trimmings on the collar and the sleeves and we had our shirts like up like this and all the mangoes were in our shirts like this and i remember seeing one huge mango right on the top branch <laughs> and i prided myself for him 
So I said, Rishikesh, give me one chance, da. Let me just hit this mango. It's a big, juicy one, da. And he goes, No, no, let's get out of here. We've got enough, and all of this. And we all had like about twenty, twenty-five mangoes each, and there were about maybe ten of us. But I took this one ball to throw this, you know, up at this mango, and this lady kept on warning us, "This is my mango tree." So I said, "What is your name on the mango tree?" <laughs> It's in my compound. I said, but your name is still not on the mango tree. And she goes, get out of here, or we trouble for you, dude. And when I looked up to throw that ball at that mango, next thing I knew, a brick hit my head, dude. And a brick hit my head, and I thought it was a mango that fell. I wasn't quite sure, you know. My threshold of pain is quite good. But then when I looked down, I felt like there was some sweat rolling down my cheek. So I kind of rubbed my cheek like that, and my hands were full of blood. And I remember all the other guys got so scared they dropped their mangoes and ran away. But you stayed there, and you're like, Machi, I think we need to go and tell your dad. And my dad was six feet three, big, strong fellow. Handsome. He's never ever raised his voice ever to me. But if my father, Doctor Vespes, looked at me, if he looked at you, you shivered. <laughs> Even till today, guys, I'm forty seven years old. My dad does never have to raise his voice. He's never once hit me, touched me, nothing. But if my father looks at me with that look, all of us know that look that our parents give us, and we all shiver. We just stand right there. So I went to him, and he checked it out. And I remember he uh, stitched me up. I needed ten stitches from that mango incident. It was quite crazy. <laughs> so Leander Prez brings his racket, and he hits some with Anand Amritraj and Vijay Amritraj. And at that time. Uh, the Britannia Amritraj Tennis Academy, which was really a gift to Indian tennis at the time, uh, had just taken off. You know, uh, for us, those were our early heroes: Mark Panero, who told us, taught us how to climb trees in Queen's Mansions; Gary O'Brien, you know, the strapping Gary in Calcutta, who was in the juniors when we were in the sub juniors. He was the stud of the group. <laughs> yeah, very popular with the girls, and you know, guys like Ruffy and old guys who had already been in bat. Gaurav Nartekar and things like that, and Leander Pace gets selected, and I'm going to cut to the three rogues in school, in Lamartine, Calcutta, all leaving together. Sunny Uthup goes to boarding school in Lovedale. Leander Pace goes to Madras Christian College High School in Chennai, and uh, Rishi K goes to Lucknow because my dad gets posted, but we never lose touch. Another one of your heroes, Dave Omera. And how you guys used to visit Lucknow, I used to visit Chennai. Let's talk about that. So remember, on um, the 12th of May, 1986, uh, after about 100 uh, doctors had told my father that he was very irresponsible for making me an athlete because I had a mitral valve prolapse in my in my heart. Um, I had Oshkosh slaughters uh, in my in my right knee because of all the football we played with a big heavy ball. Um, I had uh, epilepsy as a kid. Um, I used to get these. You know, uh, epile epileptic uh, seizures as a kid. Um, my father persevered with my sport because he knew that uh, by playing sport, the heart would get stronger. That by playing sport, my legs and my physicality that I was growing into at that age would get tougher, so the knees would get better. He knew that my lungs would get better with all the running, and most importantly, he knew that I had a desire and a passion. to emulate him and be an olympic champion for india it's the only thing i lived for at that age i didn't know what sport i didn't know whether it was cricket or whether it was hockey or whether it was football or whether it was track and field or whether it was tennis i didn't really play tennis that much other than when i came to play with you but i remember that you and sunny and were always better than me at cricket at hockey um you all were better swimmers um Sunny was a phenomenal cricketer. I mean, what a bat! I remember he had this Duncan Farnley bat. Farnley you know, bat. We used to yeah. play with these, you know, whatever other piece of stick and wood that we could pick up and play with. But he had all the right gear and stuff, you know. And um, I remember on the 12th of May, 1986. Um, I've got to thank Anand Amritraj uh, for that because at that same Davis Cup, I tried out for him. And here's another great story: is that when Akhtar Ali asked me to um, to to bring uh, uh, my tennis racket to play with. uh uh anand amritraj before i went on i didn't know what was happening none of us knew what was happening except that i was selected out of the ball boys to play with anand so i asked you i said rishike what do i do i don't even know how to play tennis and you said machi just don't let the ball bounce twice <laughs> either let it bounce once or don't let it bounce i made a career on volleying and not letting the ball bounce but Which even andre i guess he talks about <laughs> 
but it, that day i basically even went off into the doubles alley if the ball was hit outside the court i would still chase it there and and put it back i think anand was just impressed with the way i was chasing everything around because i certainly know my tennis strokes have never impressed nobody <laughs> just as andre said as well he's a bunch of kinetic energy that does not know how to hit a tennis ball he hacks and chips and throws his body at it but when at the end of the day you look at the scoreboard and you're still losing <laughs> Ryan Sadri has joined us, one of the finest saxophone players on the planet, a very dear friend. What up, Ryan? Ryan. Uh, thank you very man. much. Ch you know, Ryan's you doing something really cool, Rishike. Um, mm. Ryan is, uh, as you know, he's unbelievable on the saxophone and yeah. he's with my team, helps me a lot of, with my corporate work and speaking and things like that. And he's come up with a great idea for music. So in the, in the weeks to come, we're putting a, a nice little rendition of uh, We Are The World, uh, an old Quincy Jones, uh, Lionel Richie, uh, Michael Jackson, uh, uh, There Comes A Time. He's put this whole cool little thing together and, uh, and he sent me this last night. Last night we were up pretty late working on it. Uh, it was Ryan's son, Kyle's six month birthday yesterday. So Kyle, I know you're six months old today, but when you grow up better, here's Rishi uncle and Leander uncle wishing you happy six month birthday. And uh, Ryan's uh, put together this song, so I'm hoping that a bunch of my friends can come together and, uh, and heal this world and then talk about how we come together as, as one human race. And uh, I'd love, Rishi, for you to, uh, to, to put your vocal skills to it. We sung many a day at uh, Jazz by the Bay, so yeah. I'd love for you to join us, please. <laughs> Dave O'Mara and his love for Whitney Houston. <laughs> Whitney Houston, 1987, Lucknow, Oud Jimkana. You and me played the under-14 nationals. Um, I was playing the quarter, the semi-final match against um, uh, Mihir Mankad. Uh, and I remember playing Mihir Mankad and his father is such a legend, Binu Mankad, a cricketer. His mother, auntie, has been a guiding light and one huge inspiration the first Indian woman to go out to the international shores in tennis and play. Um, and both the brothers, Mihir and Harsh, who I eventually played Davis Cup with. 1987, I played Mihir in the semi-finals in Lucknow. And that night, I came to the Kanan household to have dinner, to eat some Thai Sada. And uh, in the, your mom made the best Thai Sada, man. She put some gunpowder and malaka podi on the side. It was amazing. <laughs> So we were eating Thai Sadam and Dave O'Mara, all of his blonde hair and his blue eyes, was so focused on uh, me winning that Nationals that uh, he would look at your... Remember, there were cassettes back then. It wasn't, <laughs> even, wasn't even, you know, iTunes or Spotify or CDs or, you know, those fancy things. It was cassettes. I remember back in your house at uh, Red Rose. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and I used to take pencils, ma, those yeah, black yeah. and red pencils, yeah. and I used to look at all your thousands of cassettes, and I used to wind them and make sure that the tape of those cassettes were clean. But during dinner at Thai Sadam and Gunpowder, Malaga Pori, um, we listened to Whitney Houston because Dave O'Meara loved uh, Whitney Houston at the time. It, I don't believe it was a bodyguard album with uh, Kevin Costner. It was something else. It was a I want to dance album. with somebody. And I want to dance with somebody. And we played cricket in the driveway with, with Roy Reddy, <laughs> who's now yeah. in New York City. Yeah. And Pushki. Huh? And I used to feed Siddharth so Kanan Dudu. <laughs> he used to be so small, he was in my arm. We used to feed him Dudu. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I'm not and sure how many people know his nickname, but sorry, uh, Sid, by giving your nickname Pushki <laughs> out. <laughs> Dave Omer, of course, was Leander's about? coach. <laughs> was coach uh, in, in Britannia Amrita Science Academy. And mm -hmm. of course, I used to come to Madras Christian College. Uh, meet Maggie Amritraj, uh, who was literally like a matron to Leander, and also Shahid and Bobo, and all his friends in, in Chennai at the time. It was lovely. Let's come to uh, 1999, the big year. Mayesh and you are conquering the world. You're at a shoot in famous studios in Mahalakshmi, and you say, Rishi K, come on over with your motorcycle. I leave you to tell the story. <laughs> So, Rishike has always been uh, an inspiration when it comes to music, when it comes to uh, uh, the gift of vocabulary, English, how to throw your voice, how to deliver a speech when you're doing corporate talks or when you're shooting an ad. Uh, so, we were at Famous Studio shooting with uh, one of our great friends, uh, Atul Kasbaker, one of the best photographers out there. I remember this was in the early days of, of Mahesh and myself. I think we were three years into it, maybe 99 or something. And uh, we were shooting for an ad in Famous Studios and 
we had just finished shooting the ad and we had to dart over to one of the gymkhanas uh, for a felicitation and juhu gymkhana yeah juhu gymkhana my god we got uh, we got mobbed at the gate you had this fancy bike that you used to ride around town and uh, another one of our friends pankaj monga and his friends in chandigarh tried to teach me how to ride a lambretta scooter way back in the day in 1990 and i almost uh, lost my left leg because the scooter fell on me so i never really was allowed uh, to ride a bike my insurance has never allowed me to you know dive out of a plane or bungee jump or ride bikes or do stuff like that i still scuba dive even though i'm not allowed to because i just love the marine world but uh that day from famous studios they had, they had sent a car for us i think i'd asked mahesh to go in the car and i jumped on the bike with you and i was sitting a uh, pillion on the back with you and you literally was zooming through the streets i remember i was wearing a suit dude it was really uh, really crazy uh, we were going through the streets of marine drive and up and down pedder pedder road bridge and uh, i don't think uh, the sea link was even there then back then and I, we just came right through uh to juhu gymkhana but what a a great ride uh, through we spent many a time on the back of that bike at bachelors uh, drinking sitaful uh, cream juice and then having a lot of fun but i used to love taking those rides on that bike with you because those are things that i was never really allowed to do we were outside the juhu gym and we are just mobbed the motorcycle can't even get in the all conquering leander pace in 1990 and my dad just turns around and brings back another memory he says dev mera and leander and roy freddy used to come to my office in lucknow to convey the results to mrs amritraj <laughs> every evening after you beat vinod amritraj uh, vinod ramachandran in the final also right. yeah but gagan mangat has joined us since we talked about chandigarh stories gagan what food we had in chandigarh got to see his mom <laughs> food and the best aloo ke parothe with pure makhan and achar do you remember his red maruti huh? yeah his red maruti 500 Was the shan of sector satara in chandigarh shan of sector satara there was about 17 of us fit into that maruti bro we used Beautiful to go to matches and back yeah <laughs> lovely grass but paji was always the good looking one na huh? always huh? still is. Huh? still is so we're going to we're going to move to um, staying in versova it was so wonderful to to uh, be a flatmate with you and you know that you're going to talk about the reason now gunda <laughs> the only reason the is go to uh, you know uh, live in a house with an indian style loo and he will tell you other reasons why i loved him as a flatmate loved him as a flatmate the only reason ladies and gentlemen and friends that i ever won tennis tournaments was to pay for this man's groceries to pay for his atta to pay for his gas this guy <laughs> would wake up in the morning way before me because he had to drive all the way to the radio station in kolaba So from Shraddha Building in Yari Road, yeah. he used to wake up at some five thirty six in the morning, order all the vegetables for the lifetime. He would order all the gas cylinders, order the sabzi, order the atta. He used to order anything and everything he wanted, and he would leave the house. <laughs> he would leave. So at seven thirty in the morning, there'd be a doorbell ringing. So I'd be like, "How is Rishi K back?" I'd go open the doorbell. there would be first the gas man saab gas dene ka hai magar cylinder to full hai nahi saab saab ne bola ki dusra gas cylinder lane ka hai chalo to rakho he put the gas cylinder in the kitchen the saab paisa kya paisa kiska paisa i have to pay him for the gas cylinder then after that 8 o'clock the sabzi wala would come saab sabzi aapne order kiya hai maine kuch ne order kiya hai nahi saab ne order kiya again every day and i was such a sucker I would pay for the 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 the, the vegetables on Monday, Tuesday they come back, Wednesday they be there again. <laughs> you Thursday I back. used to shut the doorbell uh, switch off. So even if they rang the doorbell, it would not there would be no sound. Those guys would bang on the door for fifteen twenty minutes to earn their living, because this nut would order the vegetables and the atta and everything and leave. And then you had a fabulous uh, Didi who used to come, and she used to make all the fulkas and the roti. She used to make two three sabzis and leave. the best part of that you know rishi i mean i would come back to bombay for holiday you know i mean i would work for 3 4 months at a time and then i'd come back for like a 2 3 week holiday so during the day while you were working at the radio station i would sit back in your house uh, after having paid for your vegetables and your and your roti yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And then I would look through your collection of Rolling Stone magazines. And the education in those magazines, back in the day, we never had Google or internet or laptops or fancy phones. I would look through um, the Rolling Stone magazines of all the great uh, mu musicians that we always followed, you know, like the Stings of the world and the Phil Collins of the world and, you know, the old Elvis Presleys of the world, um, you know, the, the Doors and, uh, and all those great uh, concerts that, that they would have, you know, and, uh, and as I see Anjali Utup uh, joining us here, another yeah. great RJ from, uh, from Cochin. Uh, Anjali, uh, again, is another one of my favorites. And I remember sitting in your house and looking through all those Rolling Stone magazines. You know, it was uh, such fun times, man. Uh, I think some of the best, uh, best times of my life. Uh, really cool, except for buying your bhaji for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jilly, Anjali, thank you for being an elder sister to us. Jürgen Mohrhard. Uh, the German Consul General is here, and he's a big tennis fan. Hi, Jürgen. Uh, Jürgen, how are you doing? Uh, wonderful to see you. Clayton Marzello, Ashwin Rego, all you fantastic You know that Jürgen is a, is a huge uh, tennis player and fan. Every year that I go yes. to Pune for the, uh, the, the Indian Open, uh, he's right there in the front row watching and cheering. And, and after the match, he comes back and gives me uh, a very apt... Uh, criticism on what I did wrong and how I should improve. But uh, <laughs> lovely family, both of them, him and his wife. Yeah, and I used to come home to that building in Warsaw and see Leander playing badminton with the kids in the building. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I used to have a Fiat Uno. It used to be parked in the center <laughs> and used to be badminton. Let's Shraddha move to building, was it? Shraddha building, yes. Let's uh, move to Dubai. We went dune bashing for the first time with a guy called Shahid. Jonas Bjorkman was your partner. And Tommy Robredo introduces us to what could be a future legend. Let's talk about Dubai. Uh, I remember the first night in Dubai was a lot of fun because Zishan Ali was there at the time, living there, training, coaching there. And he had a friend called Shahid. And Shahid uh, took us uh, dune bashing because he used to be a bit of a, a rally driver. And I remember he took us uh, to a Formula One track where we put these uh, uh, really fast, uh, souped up cars on the track. And we used to race around the track and, uh, uh, you know, practice our driving skills, which both of us love. Um, but we played the first match on a Wednesday night. And uh, we drew uh, a, a Tommy Robredo and a, a young 14 and a half year old Rafael Nadal. And none of us uh, had ever heard of Rafael Nadal before. And you know how I do my homework. So I'd gone yeah. and done my homework the day before to see how this young kid played because I knew he was a southpaw, he was lefty. I knew he had a huge forehand inside out because, you know, the, his aura already was in the locker room before he had come there. Um, but doing the homework, I knew this kid was really good. But I really found out how good he was, Rishi, when we played him. Uh, there was one tough match. Uh, yes, we got the better of them because Rafa was still really young. I've played him in several matches uh, since uh, all over the world. But that day when uh, Jonas and myself played Tommy and Rafa, I remember in the locker room at the end, we, you and I chatting and we had won and he said, you asked me, he said, uh, what do you think of this kid? And uh, I didn't know, you know, how my predictions would come true back then. But I said to you, uh, I think this kid is going to win a Grand Slam. And it's like in doubles. No, he just lost you in doubles. <laughs> I'm like, no, my son, in singles. And uh, look what an unbelievable legend of the game he's become. What a legend um, he's become. Rafa's another guy who epitomizes what an athlete should be, uh, yes. Mahjong, because, you know, the stories of him winning Grand Slams and winning the French Open 10 times and winning Wimbledon and the US has all been written about. Him being number one in the world has been written about. But one story that uh, defines Rafael Nadal to me is this. After he won the French Open, one of the years that he won, him, Uncle Tony, and, and uh, Carlito, Carlos, his, his manager, were walking down Champs-Élysées the, break, for breakfast the morning after winning the French Open. And as they were walking uh, down Champs-Élysées, they had just gotten out of their transport. Uh, Rafa was in the middle and uh, Carlito was on one side and Uncle Tony was on the outside towards the road. And as uh, legend goes, Rafa turned around and caught Uncle Tony's shoulder and asked him to walk on the inside so that he would be safe. And Rafa walked on the outside towards where the cars were coming, you know. And uh, to me, that shows what a thorough gentleman he is. To me, that shows that good great. And uh, I'll never forget that story of Rafa Nadal, uh, one of my favorites. 
I'm going to I'm going to come to you being in the Anderson Center, your illness, how you were such a brave heart through it all. Uh, I remember speaking to you during that dark phase of your life, but you were always positive. And people talk about when Mr. Bachchan was ill in Breach Candy Hospital, the scenes outside the Anderson Medical Center in the United States of America have to be seen or heard to be believed, Leander. Yes, uh, 2000. Um, I was playing at Wimbledon in uh, in the mixed doubles with uh, Martina Navratilova, one of my favorite uh, partners ever. And I remember in the quarterfinal match, I jumped up for a smash. And as I jumped up for a smash, um, I lost my eyesight. Uh, we were on center court. It was the middle of the day. And I had the presence of mind. Uh, I was about four feet up in the air to hit this smash. And we were up a set and a break already. We were about 15 minutes away from winning the match. And when I jumped up and I lost my eyesight, I knew I was that high in the air. So I just let my racket go and I covered my head because I lost uh, uh, all uh, uh, visual uh, with the floor. And when I came down like a ton of bricks, everyone burst out laughing because most people know me as, uh, as, a, as, a, as a prankster, um, you know, from our school days. But uh, I think uh, just as the great Charlie Chaplin said, sometimes you've got to bring humor and laughter into tough situations. And uh, uh, when Martina came up in, to me and she says, Lee, don't play pranks right now. Now's not the time. I'm like, Marty, I can't see. And she's like, no, Lee, I'm serious. We got to win this match and get out of here. We're going for a world record. I'm like, Marty, I really can't see. So she, we called out Dr. Tudor Miles, who, uh, who came onto the court and he, uh, he, he checked my temperature and I was burning up with 104 uh, temperature and 104.3, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and he said, why haven't you told us? And I'm like, listen, I'm going for a world record, as she just said. Um, give me 15 minutes. Just help me get my eyesight back. Win this match. And after this match, I promise I'll do whatever you want. And uh, Dr. Tudor Miles is like, no, you've got to get off the court right now. It's very dangerous. I'm like, Doc, just give me a second. Everything will be fine. And uh, Marty actually tapped me on my face. And the whole crowd on center court burst out laughing because they thought we were playing pranks. But when she tapped me on my left side of my face, something happened. And later on, I found out why I got my eyesight back. Dr. Tudor Miles was gracious enough to let me go back on the court. We played that day. We won the quarterfinals. We won the semifinals two days later. And then when we won Wimbledon, um, I remember at the little speech uh, to talk about um, uh, the, the world record that we had created for the oldest woman to ever win a Grand Slam title and also for uh, a, a lady to win 21 Grand Slam titles um, at Wimbledon was a world record. I thought I was pretty feeling pretty cool because I'd won Wimbledon for the sixth time back then, but she had won 21 titles, you know, including singles, which shows what an amazing legend uh, Navratilova is. But at that speech, um, I couldn't see the mic. So Martina was holding my hand down below at my pocket level and at my pant pocket level. And she kind of maneuvered me around just to make sure the mic was in front of me. And I, I couldn't, I had lost my sight again while I was giving the speech. So with my, my ear. Orlando, Florida, I uh, lost my sight at breakfast at uh, Sid Chandra's house. And uh, they took me straight to the hospital. Uh, the doctor there diagnosed me with a um, cancerous tumor in the left occipital region of my brain. And the reason I lost my sight at Wimbledon was the tumor was sitting on my optic nerve. And every time it sat on the nerve, I guess I lost sight. And it happened about three times during that uh, 2003 Wimbledon uh, championships. But um, I've really got to thank a few people, uh, Rishi, for, for saving my life back then because I was misdiagnosed to start with, for the record straight. Um, I did not have cancer. Um, I was diagnosed with it. I went for treatment under it. Um, the radiologist who diagnosed me said that the vocabulary of English where um, a cancerous tumor uh, uh, meant it was a foreign particle in the body. Whereas in our British English, uh, any time you, you, you call it a cancerous tumor, it's cancer. So a um, few months in the MD Anderson, um, a phenomenal team uh, behind me, uh, Dr. Popat, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. B.S. Single at the Bombay Hospital, one of the legends of medicine, uh, a man who saved my life and subsequently uh, saved Ayana's life as well in 2016. She had a 
had a, a, a tumor in her brain which she needed a surgery for. Um, Dr. Dr. Uh, uh, Brown, who was the head of the MD Anderson, and my dear friend uh, Rasesh Thakkar, whose uh, company owned uh, the MD Anderson, looked after me for months. Uh, and I'll never forget uh, the tens of thousands of uh, 20, 30,000 people at the bottom of the hospital with flowers and cards uh, and the the one, uh, the one uh, or two straggling uh, photographers or media people who try to dress up as doctors with doctor tags and stethoscopes around them to come in through the service uh, elevators to try and get pictures of me to put out in the media. Um, <laughs> we had to combat that sort of stuff as well. But with the, with the support and the blessings and the, and the well wishes from tens of thousands of people uh, all over the world, um, I got through that and uh, came back to play uh, my fourth Olympics in Athens, which I promised my dad and came one shot shy of winning a medal there. But I'm just very grateful to all my supporters and fans around the world who have supported me through thick and thin. They've believed in me. They've stood by my side. Uh, they, 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 they've encouraged me when I doubted myself. Um, they've uh, kept me playing when I thought I should retire a few times in my career. Um, for all you guys out there who have supported me over the years, um, uh, just, I bow my head in gratitude. Thank you very much for, for being, the, being the wind uh, within my wings. We are going to have to log off when we finish an hour and log back in. Those are Instagram's rules. So we're going to log off and come back in five minutes. Yeah, to finish this. Yeah, to finish this.